Hello, this is Tammy from Singles Travel International, and we are presenting the country of Turkey today. Our presentation and our tour next May is called Treasures of Turkey. And we are in the room with one of the most esteemed guides in the country of Turkey. He will share some of his latest experiences with you. I have personally toured with Mert Tanner, and uh, I, I learned so much on his tour. I could sit with him for hours in a room and hear about the history, the archaeology, um, and, and, and hopefully it's a really cool room like the Hagia Sophia or the Blue Mosque where he is expert, um, but not only expert in Istanbul, the entire country. He is one of the most requested guides by all of the top companies in the world. And he's even been touring with some famous people, some of whom I think you guys might know. With that, I'm going to introduce Mert Tanner. Mert, welcome to, um, to our presentation today and all the way from Turkey. Thanks for joining us. Hi, Tammy. Hi, everyone. How are we doing? Greetings from Istanbul, where the temperature is almost 80 Fahrenheit. It's 7 p.m. I got a long history with Tammy. We've been friends and working together almost 2007. Did a couple of groups in cruises in Istanbul and kind of like, and I'm so happy. She is more than a business partner. She's a good friend. And we always like to support each other in many cases as well. I'm, I'm so happy to share my country with you folks. E, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna a little bit talk about Turkey. First of all, the country, what is, why people like to come to Turkey, what's the background of the country and historical background, biblical backgrounds, and what attracts the people. For example, I just finished my tour with one of the major US operators and tomorrow I'm going to get a new one. I have no even day off. This year, Turkey is so popular in US market and next year as well. So Americans show a lot of attention and that's why it's better a little bit why the Americans like Turkey so much. I think one of the major thing attracts to Turkey is the its geographical location. Some people say it's such a blessed location. Some people say it's a very cursed location. You can easily see if you look at the map. It's in the junction of the three old continents. The north and the west is Europe. The east is Asia and the south is Africa. And Turkey itself it has been a crossroads for so many different civilizations. That's why again, when it comes to Turkey guys, it's just like a kind of, you're traveling in a time tip. You can see so many old biblical uh, civilizations from Bronze Age, like Hittites. You can see the old well-known Greco-Roman civilizations and then through the, like the Celts, through the Romans. And then you can see also like a important things about the modern history. It is very important. But one of the major thing, what makes the Turkey so unique is the junction of the, all the Abrahamic religions, especially when the subject is the Christianity, you can easily see that St. Paul used the Turkey and Ephesus is the center of the whole is Gentile operation and Christianity spread it all the rest of the world from Turkey, from the lands of modern Turkey as well. So like a, everywhere you travel, around the, especially in our itinerary, I can easily remind you, hey guys, this is a place where Paul write the letter to Galatians, Galatia, Galatians. Hey, this is a place where he wrote the letter to, letter to Colossians, and this is Laodicea. This is my letters. And you can easily hear, you know those names, you heard about those places, but seeing them physically intact, it's a really a lifetime experience as well. And of course, like a kind of, there are so many, very important, very special biblical size, like a house of Mother Mary, you can see. And the whole Ephesus, some of you been already before, it's like a real treasury. But also apart from those biblical times and Greek Roman periods, we have also the home of the, one of the largest empire in the world history, Ottomans, especially your journey in Istanbul, which I think Marcia, Marcia it really attracts you a lot. You can easily see the, how the Ottomans become a major important trigger factor today is the things that we call Renaissance or even the reform movement of the whole modern Christian world. So 
every action what must trigger this part of the world change all the shape of uh, history as well. That's why like in one of the most famous traveler in the world and the travel writer Rick Steves always says that if you wanna understand Europe, you have to first start from Turkey and then Greece and then Rome, and then you can go to the rest of the Western world and understand how the Western culture evolved as well. But today, Turkey is like a kind of the home of a brand new country established in 1923. So next year, when you come, folks, we're gonna celebrate our 100th anniversary. It's gonna be big fun. It's gonna be big entertainment joy as well. If people, people generally ask me, and I've been in the Smithsonian's where I lead their tours to, and in one of the lectures I deliver in Smithsonian's in Washington, DC, one professor asked me, is there only one word if you want to define a country of Turkey? Which word do you prefer? And this word is very simple, diversity. When you travel in Italy, I love Italy. I'm a crazy Sicilian fan, but you can see from south to north, the repetitive pattern. Every region in Turkey is different. They look like seven different regions, seven geographical languages, seven different lifestyles. This is a country where Jews, Christians, Muslims, conservative Muslims, or very modern liberal mind people, everybody live together. I think that's the great harmony because we really learn how to live together and how to respect each other. Turkey is a size is a very big country, just the right way to understand, put the whole Texas here, not enough. We need at least uh, the half of California to the top of Texas, and then you can get the surface area of Turkey. We're a large country, spacious country. And in this spacious country, our approximate population is eight to four million. But plus we have bonuses, which are the Syrian, Afghani refugees. Folks, we get roughly five million refugees. And we are the only country in the world having such a high number of refugees. There's no other country welcoming us because this is our tradition. This is our, we welcome people. It happened to my ancestors. My grand grand grandparents, 1492, were the victims of the Spanish Inquisition. I'm Sephardic Jew. And guys, all the Sephardic Jews were kicked out from Spain. They got no place to go, 300,000 people. And guess what happened? Ottoman Turks sent their fleet took them from Spain, took them from Portugal and France, brought them to Istanbul. And then as well, like uh, my ancestors have been living in Turkey as Jewish people in a predominantly Muslim country. And sometimes American Jews would like, a, hey, Mert, I, we know it's politically incorrect, but are you comfortable living in Turkey? Oh my gosh, I feel like there's a red carpet in front of me everywhere. <laughs> it's just like a, so comfortable. People are very relaxed because this is how we discovered to live together. And you can see that in Turkey, we have some big cities as well, but Istanbul is the largest one. The number over there is 16 million, but folks today, we know that this number is almost 20 million. But also Istanbul is the only city in the world which takes place within the two continents. The one thing about the Turkey, you can easily feel when you walk around in the streets, Turkey is such a young country such a progressive country. 35% are under, uh, like over 35 years old. Imagine that, we 50% under 28 years old. We are the youngest country in Europe and you can feel the energy when you walk around the streets of Istanbul or walk around Kushadasa or even walk around the lunar scape of Cappadocia. That's a kind of like a big thing. And Although society is like a predominantly Muslim, Islam doesn't restrict the lifestyle of people in here because Turkey is officially a secular country. And that's why, and also women get a lot of education opportunities. Almost 65% of the undergrad and master's students are women. And as a person, I'm 51 years old, which means I'm qualified as senior citizen Turkey. Folks, we can't believe that I lost 30 years I can easily feel the big rising power of women in business, in economy, in politics. 
22% of the, or parliament, we get women MPs. This is after the Finland is the second highest rate in Europe. But don't forget that Finland is a country with the 8 million. Turkey is a country with the 84 million. We're doing that in a, such a big crowded place. For example, the lady with the glasses on the upper left, she is the CEO of the largest conglomerate in Turkey. Over 250,000 people, they work for her. And the right underneath is a well-known Turkish writer, Elif Shafak. She was one of the uh, Nobel Literacy Prize nominee several years ago as well. And you can see covered Muslim woman, athletic woman, soldier woman, women are very important part of the world. Turkey is the 19th largest economy. By the way, our economy is trembling a lot because of our wrong ethics policies. And do you wanna know how much one US dollar is? 18.4. So this is like a, my tour members, which I finished the tour last week, they said that we started the tour with a 17, 85, now it's 18.4. Oh my gosh, we're spending less, more and more money and we're feeling like a billionaire. It's a kind of feeling. And probably this wrong ethics policy and its reflection gonna go on next year as well. But still, we're a country of manufacturing. This is a country where chimneys are working and this manufacturing enable us to survive well. One of the reasons, for example, we're the second major textile country in the world. We're the third major card produ producer country in the world. But most importantly, Turkey is a, a big military society. And apart from as a size wise ranking, the most important thing for us Turkey guys is the second major ally. I'm a great example myself in between the 2002 and 2003, I was prize, uh, specifically served in Afghanistan as a Marine officer in a multinational Turkish American British Marine mixed brigade. And I was a quick reaction force officer in a front guide work and fought shoulder to shoulder with American soldiers. So like a kind of, it can show that with Turkey is a really, really a big partner in the US. Although I need to be honest, Turkey and Biden doesn't go well, but previously uh, Turkish American relations are always like a tongue and grow. And as I put in a picture, since 1952, Turkey is a big NATO member. So my big question comes, why Turkey? What attracts the people in Turkey? So many people got so many interests, but I think all this needs like a really fit with the people. If you're a history bomb, history buff, this is a place where everything started, I can say, with a part of the Middle East, with a part of the Peloponnese Peninsula, because I never look at the whole beginning point as just a Turkey. Turkey, Greece, and the Middle East, this is a territory we Bible historians, I'm a Bible historian myself, we call this part as Fertile Crescent. And this is so important to understand all the Western values. But I think what makes it so tricky special is the local people. In this tour, especially we designed with Tammy, we, we're gonna give you a lot of opportunities to meet with the locals. You get a chance to talk with them, understand with them. We will have some house visits. And even Tammy, I never told her, but I get a big surprise, but I'm telling you guys, I'm gonna organize a local imam. She will, he will join us while we are sharing our teas and coffees. You're gonna ask questions and he's gonna give you an answer. So you will hear the real version of Islam, the Turkish version from a first hand, because those local people really, really melts the, all the misperceptions, remove them and give you a real authentic experience. And part of our travel thought is meeting, acting and mingling with the locals. And this is one thing we try to do it a lot. And you can see that we visit the house of the local people and even the village people. And come on, definitely, I'm not a smoker. <laughs> Tell me, did you put some kind of like a Photoshop over there? <laughs> but we'll give you that even experience of hookah because that's what standard average Turks love to do. And 
even just like a, in your once a step in your life, you should try that. And but one of the other thing about the Turkey guys, Turkey is a huge shopping heaven. A heaven. It's a kind of places where you can see a lot of great handicraft products, the carpets, the scarves, the tiles, the great leather products. I hope Tammy, you are still wearing your jacket we chose for a year. And, and my amazing, belt. Thank you very much. <laughs> amazing copper words, the jewelry is like a kind of, oh my gosh, but the worst and the worst thing. If you put your feet in a turkey, guys, you're going to put at least three, definitely not even three, four pounds. Even we walk every day, 15,000 steps. I mean, like, in, I can give you a whole lecture about the Turkish food, like about, this is the capital of kebabs. This is the capital of the vegetarian casseroles. This is the capital of the mezes. And we make the octopus as tender as grapes. Let me tell you, it's really good. And we're really good with the seafood, but if the subject is lamb, nobody is in our league. You have to eat lamb in Turkey in as a kebab form like this, or as a kind of shank form over there. And or octopus carpaccio is kind of like a really delightful, but like a Turkish delights are the great thing with the Turkish coffee which we call in our local language as a sledgehammer, which really wakes you up, richly awake you. <laughs> the type of like, a, a, who's going like any Israel over there saying that, Robin, you're gonna try this in Israel, uh, which is called kunafa, but the <laughs> Turkish one, you know what we do? We don't use the corn syrup. We really use the honey, stir it with the water and pour in it and put, chunk of pistachio and chunk of a clotted cream from the buffalo milk. That's the, even, even that dessert is a must of reason to come to this stumble before go or returning back from the Israel as well. And these are the major things really attract the people because you are historically, culturally satisfying. You get a lot of shopping opportunities. You get a good food, especially in the store. We add few things as included dinner and lunch in the places where we get difficult to get but in most of the places me and Tammy will love family style flooding and I think Vicky gonna join to the tour probably and I love Vicky a lot and then we just go to local restaurants I order on behalf of you according to take your like a dietary concerns I know what we do in those places which are not included we eat together we share lots of different things make a big feast we share like a family style because at the end of the day, we are STI family. That's the whole mentality tell me, try to infuse through the this tour, culture of this tour again. And again and again in this tour, we want you to learn the every place as we go in a nice way and understanding the city lives, rural lives, some kind of clergy lives and all of them together. And we will have a three nights in Istanbul two full nights and a three days in Cappadocia, a night in the Konya, a night in the Pamukkale, which is like the hot thermal springs, three nights in Bodrum and two nights finally in Kushadasa. That's our plan. Istanbul, guys, is the, like a, if you ask me to count the four major cities, like a kind of, again, the four major cities you have to see is Istanbul, London, Rome and Paris. Even like uh, Mark Twain said, don't die before seeing these four major cities. It's an important thing. And it's a city with the 20 million. It's a city with a high public traffic, but we arrange a, such a great location as a hotel. We do the whole, the major old towns of Istanbul, only five to 10 minutes to walk. So which means we get away from the traffic we do everything with the eye in a fast way, an official way, because either me and Tammy and Vicky, we don't like guys, the traffic. And Istanbul is renowned with the traffic, but we are professional travelers. We help you to get away from the traffic as well. And if you ask me, Mark, what's the number one thing attractive is Topkapi Palace. And I think Rick, that is a part of your interest 
as well. This is where the Ottoman sultans ruled not only the Ottoman Empire, ruled the world for 450 years. And it's kind of, again, it doesn't look like any other palaces. The only palace it looks like it actually is the hidden palace in the Beijing in China. It was built as courtyard by courtyard. So we that way, every courtyard we get restrictions. Only certain people can access over there. But to really feast your eyes, especially the tile works, the quality of carpets, it just like it takes you to from one place through the like another. You feel yourself like a, a real Ottoman guest over there in this amazing building. And the most important thing, we not only just visit the part of the pal main palace, we also visit the special uh, section, which is the harem over there. Hi, Kerry. Give me a hard time. Kerry, do you have a question? I can't hear. If you have any questions, guys, do not hesitate to ask me. I love questions. Anyway, like a kind of we visit harem section of the palace as well, which and then tell it all the stories of the harem people to you. And you can see this is the entrance of the harem with former STI term members all together in here. And look at the beautiful tiles all around here. It is a really magical place. By the way, Istanbul is not only hosting 20 million people, Istanbul is also hosting approximately half million cats. So you're going to see half million cats around the 20,000 <laughs> dogs. We love our cats and dogs. All of them, none of them are skinny. All of them are well fed. Maids <laughs> are the part of our lives. All the restaurants in Istanbul, they never throw the leftover foods. They give them to the special foundation. That foundation make it big compost and deliver to all the street animals. So like a, we really take of them well. And in Topkapı Palace is host of approximately 200 cats. Everywhere you can see them, they're lovely. But of course, if you ask me, that's my personal opinion, the major, the most important thing, building. And I think the most important highlight of whole Istanbul is Hagia Sophia, or in an American way, Hagia Sophia. This is a really Roman masterpiece, 6th century AD. Today, if we have St. Paul in London, St. Peter in Rome, or Duomo in Florence, Suleimani Mosque in Istanbul, this is the 101 building. All of them were built 1,000 years or 1,100 years later. St. Peter, where the dome is only four feet higher, it took 160 years to complete. This building in 6th century AD, it took five years, 10 days, and 25 years, 10 months, 24 days. That is the great masterpiece of the Romans. And that's why it's the core of the Turkish Islamic art, Christian dome buildings. They all use it as a model book for themselves. Today, it's an, turned into the inactive mosque, but it doesn't prevent us to visit this beautiful place. Even we can travel anytime. And in our tour, <clears throat> I like to take you Hagia Sophia, not only in the daytime, I want to take you at the nighttime as well, because it's only 200 yards away from your hotel. And generally nighttime around the nine o'clock, there will be no one over there. We can just walk around and you can do your meditation. You can feel this amazing dome underneath. And of course, as I told you, Hagia Sophia is the home of the uh, very famous cat, Glee. When Obama visited, Glee was on the shoulder of Obama. When Putin visited, she scratched Putin. <laughs> so she knows and appreciates the politicians in that way as well. And you can see some beautiful mosaics from there. Another interesting masterpiece in Istanbul, which is just like a 300 yards other side of the Hagia Sophia is the Blue Mosque. Unlike in Hagia Sophia, it was built 1100 years later, but interior decoration, it is so unique. So masterpiece, 
All the drawings you can see were all pen drawing. The master spent nine years to draw the, all the floristic patterns and they all have one aim, to create the Garden of Eden in the interior of building. And they did it in a quite interesting way as well. And of course, when we do, we have two important mosquitoes. We have to obey the rules with that. Ladies, you have to dress modestly, cover yourself, and just enjoy the atmosphere of the those great mosquitoes. And look at our one of our groups we did together, and people are smiling all together. And again, around the Golden Horn, we have the legendary Sulaymaniyah Mosque, which is like a uh, exactly the same time it was built with the St. Peter and some St. Paul in London and St. Peter of Rome. But all the structures took 30 years up to 150 years. It took only seven years to finish this beautiful masterpiece. Of course, these are the terms of 16th century. Ottomans were the superpower of the world as well. And of course, we have a private uh, bus first cruise. We're going to be in our own boats and we're going to see the, all the million dollars properties. But when I talk about the million dollars, these are million dollars between the $50 million up to $150 million beautiful waterside mansions. And you can feel yourself. The one side is Asia, the other side is Europe. While you sip your Turkish coffee or sipping your wine or beer, feeling the Bosphorus is a unique experience. And this is one of my personal highlight in all Istanbul. And of course, me and Tammy, every night, we like to give you a different perspective, different entertainment. So not on the daytime, we're gonna make you tired. Nighttime, we all turn to party animals, get ready. And we like to give you the, the good food with a good view with a good entertainment. That's what we do with SDI. But if you want to not only satisfy your eyes, but satisfy your taste, Spice Market is a really, really unique experience. And over there, we organize a special spice and Turkish delight tasting where you can enjoy and you get an opportunity to buy the, the best saffron, the best mixed kebabs of the world as well. For the Grand Bazaar, I don't need to talk about it. Both Tammy and the Vicky are the experts, but this is the place. Just tell you in a different way, is the size of 10 soccer fields, the oldest and still the largest shopping mall. It's bigger than Alamana shopping mall in Honolulu and Mall of America in Pittsburgh. And it's much older, of course, as you appreciate it. This is the place you get tired. This is the place that's why I give you a guided tour at least an hour and a half, and then I'll give you a free time and you can enjoy your own discoveries as well. And after completing all those places, guys, we don't want you to drive almost 11 hours. We get the Turkish Airlines waiting you and we fly from Istanbul to Cappadocia. The best way to describe the Cappadocia guys is a geographical wonderland. It's a lunar scape, three volcanic eruption created this interesting landscapes. We have a lot of tabletops, cape pillars, steep valleys. The best way to describe, tell me remember you organized a tour in the May, I couldn't come, I wanted to come. The Utah Grand Canyon walk, it's exactly, you feel yourself like a kind of Brace Canyon, or the hoodies of the Albuquerque, New Mexico, in between all of them. But this place is also the center of the hot air ballooning in the world. And we definitely organize a hot air ballooning and we keep your seats in advance before even asking you. And we give you this marvelous once in a lifetime experience, discovering the, all the Cappadocia with seeing from the balloons as well. And we have a lot of Kodak options. Some of our funny term members and enjoying their Kodak times over there is as well, as you can see. And we meet with the locals. We eat, we share the food in their house with a traditional style, with their own way. And this is the best place you can experience 
a real comfort foods, but also the Cappadocia is a very important Christianity center. Early Christians, they use this place as a shelter for themselves from the Roman persecutors. And all this rock carved church, you can see the amazing frescoes. These are the much earlier examples of the Renaissance period. And of course, the underground cities. In Cappadocia, we have 16 underground cities and all those underground cities give you a different troglodyte life experiences those people lived over there. And you have some interesting art exhibitions. Cappadocia for a thousand years is a place of the tile and pottery making. So we visit the workshops underground, almost 100 feet you go down and then you can see those workshops and their kilns and enjoy over there. And after that, we drive the city of Konya. This is the city of whirling dervishes. And this is a city we have a chance to meet with very important guy, Rumi, the founder of the whirling dervish uh, mystic groups and the, one of the most famous poems in the world. But Konya is a very progressive city and it was the capital of the Salchukian empire. It was a biblical city of the Paul visit several times. And we walk around the city, we visit the tomb of Rumi, and you get a chance to meet with a whirling dervish and watch a real whirling dervish performance over there as well. And then we come to the Pamukkale, which is one of the like a unique plays in the world. And it's a, only 20,000 years old, a brand new geographical structure, hot springs created all this cascade pools, the calcium pools. From outside, it looks like a big white cliffs. Part of the uh, Yellowstone ages ago, it, it was like that, but it totally disappeared. There's a one small place in China, a little bit looks like, but very small. That's a unique place in the world. And also the hotel we, hotel we stayed over there, guys, we have our own thermal pools. So not only visiting this place, but also in your hotel, you will have a chance and experience the hot springs and people love it. So unique places too. Look at the pool. This pool of Cleopatra surrounded by the columns. And in the ninth century AD, after the earthquake all tumbled down and you can sit on these columns, you can enjoy yourself, you can relax, you can chill in this nice and lukewarm water. And everybody says that their skin feels much better after spending a one hour in this beautiful pool too. How's it going, by the way? I hope you guys are enjoying. And then the next place is a great Roman city, Aphrodisias. This was a cult city of Romans and one of the really most well-preserved Roman city in the world. And in this city, we was a so many interesting structures. You can see our previous tour members. Oops, sorry, I just a lot. But we have one important building, which is on the lower left. You can see the world largest stadium. It's bigger than Circus Maximus. It is much bigger than Olympia. But most important thing, it's an intact structures. This is the area I give you free time. And I want you either you run 150 yards for yourself to feel the Olympic atmosphere, or you can just walk around the top of it and see this amazing Roman structure too. Right here, after having a, another two and a half hours drive, we get three nights in Bodrum. This is our favorite place. This is the Centrope of the Eastern Mediterranean zone. This beautiful castle is a beautiful crusader castle. And of course, with my little bit background, I wanna give you the whole the detail of the crusader life while we are visiting this castle, which is also the world's largest underwater archeological museum. Americans from Texas, Texas A&M, started the underwater archeology span in 1960s in the world in Bodrum, and this is a city we will see a couple of thousand amphoras and amazing uh, pieces, places over there as well. And this, this is a downtown Bodrum, 
and look at the clarity of water. And you can just swim in it even in the downtown. It's a, such an interesting place. The old town of Bodrum, it's so unique. It's so colorful. You can find so many uh, authentic evil eyes, some kind of like a souvenir works, just like a throw the local to here. But also, we're going to visit a village where almost 800 people live. These are once upon a time the nomadic people of Bodrum. And they settled down around the 300 years ago and they still keep their old traditions and still almost 300 women, they make their income from the carpet weaving. And we visit their houses. They, we go into their houses and what's the Turkish rule? Take off our shoes, like this way. We meet with the even elder family members like that. And now we're gonna cook foods that offer that you're gonna see this amazing art of Turks. And these are not like a kind of like a centers or the places. These are the places where we, uh, people like a kind of, these are the places where local people make these carpets. And if they have a chance to sell, they keep the money for themselves. So this is something such a unique and you learn a lot. If you don't have to buy, but you should learn about this beautiful art of the Turks. And then we get a two hours drive and we come to my precious Ephesus, how my story with Tammy started in 2008, actually. This is the largest archeological site in the world. This is the city of Paul. This is the city of Mark Antony, Cleopatra. This is the city of Alexander the Great, St. John, and probably Mother Mary as well. And then, we don't do one hour cruise tour in here. We do, I do two and a half hours, a detailed tour, including terrace houses of Ephesus. And after that, we'll give you extra an hour and a half for your time. Either you can return back or pray in the seats of the theater or St. Paul preach or walk around the Agora where again, the stories of St. John took place and we can return back to the library and just discover the Jewish menorah on the staircases as well. It's a really a time to, to Roman periods. And that's why we, I, I spent four hours with my tour members. I don't wanna rush in this such a unique place. Let's look at the gorgeous Ephesus as well. And some of you remember, probably Peggy, you remember the library, which is like a, a really unique building over there. And of course, while we're taking it to the Western part of Turkey, wine is our culture. Folks, Turkish people are predominantly Muslim, but we have one important habit. Drinking is a big habit. Turks, they love drinking and Turks even love drinking and driving at the same time. <laughs> it's kind of like a very bad habit. We have a saying, what's the difference between the Turkish wedding and Turkish funeral? One less drunk. In every opportunity, we we'll love to drink. We have raki or local spread, but Eugene region becoming the center of the viniculture. And that's why we'll take you. Oh, by the way, these are the wines. Take a picture. If you go to Whole Foods, Whole Foods start to sell Turkish organic wines. I know Whole Foods is a whole paycheck, but their clam chowder is amazing. That's one thing I love it. And of course, while you're in Kushadasa, we want you not only eat like a Turks, shop like a Turks, drink like a Turks. We also show you to clean like a Turks as well. And we take you to the Turkish baths. Our Turkish baths, unfortunately, is a traditional one where the sex are segregated. That's why they never take me inside. I always try to go to the ladies' side. They Turkish ladies ruling over there kick me out. But boys, I promise you a great Turkish bad experience as well in our time period. I don't know what happens to the ladies' side, but all the ladies come with laughs and with a beautiful exfoliated, a brand new baby bump skin. It's such a unique experience as well. 
That's my country. Now you folks give me a hard time. Anything you're curious about, I would like to answer your questions. All right, guys, um, um, we're gonna open up for some questions and I'm going to end the video so we can feel free to talk to Mert, our expert from Turkey. For those of you who are watching us on YouTube, we look forward to meeting you in person sometime soon.